Hello everybody, welcome back to my Let's Play. Um, it's 2.35 in the morning and I'm going to try and uh, squeeze in a quick round of carrier combat um, to show you all how it works. It's not really that different, but there are a few small differences between uh, regular combat and carrier combat. Um, now, where we left off last, I would started... Um, production of the carrier and or building tooling up to that um, it's been a lot longer than I expected or um, accounted for um, I decided that after designing the carrier I'll show you that in a second after designing the carrier I decided I realized that my new engine tech uh, internal fusion was if I put all my research into it, I'm about a year away, so I decided, yeah, let's go get that. And then I got that, and then I designed the engines, and then I had to research those, and then I had to refit, or at least I tried to refit. Um, I built the carrier and a bunch of fighters, and I tried to refit, but then I realized, whoops, I'm running out of Galasite. So, with that crunch, most of my ships have not been refit. Um, the fighters were all built without the um, with the old engine, so they can only do 15,000 or 16,000, um, compared to the new fighters, which can do 20. And I'll, like I said, I'll show you all that in a second. But overall, um, at the moment, I have a mix between um, Magneto and Internal Confinement. Uh, with the fighter and carrier, well, with the carrier being internal confinement. Um, I've also got a 25 kiloton jump drive um, for things. So I'll show you what's been upgraded. So this is the old Arunta jump carrier, jump tender, and this is a new one. Um, so it's got the 500 EP internal fusion drives, so just 100 extra EP per engine, uh, and it's got the 25 kiloton um, military jump drive. I had to upgrade it to 25 because the carrier was uh, bigger than 16. Uh, it's also got almost double the fuel capacity as well, so it can serve as a much more capable tanker, and it's faster as well. So that's the Urunta. Um The Melbourne 2. Um, I've designed the, the prototype Melbourne 3. I've had a prototype here because I intend to upgrade its lasers um, and, it, and well, at least lasers, but it's got the new um, fusion drives and ECCM or EWAR 30. Um, that's still in prototype stage. I ha will not be retiring the Melbourne 2 until I get new lasers, so Melbourne 3 is in um, the prototype stage. Um, the the Grim B. Um, exploration ship has been upgraded not only with the uh, has been upgraded to the 16 kiloton version so it's up so it's got the internal fusion drives it's got two of them now so it's got more than double the power um, it's got the 16 kiloton military jump drive the old style it's got active sensors for both missiles and ships um, it's still got a thermal sensor, but it's and it's got the um, the same gravitational sensors and stuff like that. But basically, it's just got the much improved range, so it's got almost double the range. It's got um, a fair amount more speed, um, and overall, it's just a nicer, better, better ship, more suited to um, long distance exploration. Um, and that sensor is also going to keep it a little bit safer as well, because it means we're going to be able to see things further out. So that's that. Um, we've got the River 2 upgraded to the River 3, so it's still 16,000, basically just new engines, that's it, nothing special. Um, the Gauss turrets are still identical, um, I haven't really made any improvements into that, but I am slowly working on it. Uh, so at the moment, it's just the new engines, uh, gets an extra 2,000 kilometers um, per second, so nothing special there. Um, the Sheehan got a major refit, um, gained 1,300 kilometers a second, up to 8,000. Uh, the 
maintenance is about the same. Uh, magazine is the same, but I've upgraded not just the engines, but also the launchers as well. So you'll see that the Patriot has a, has a reload of 15, and the size 6 has a reload of 225. Um, that's now been reduced to... Uh, 180 for the same size missile launcher, but I've also redu uh, you're running reduced size uh, size one launchers, which I haven't actually named properly. Um, so still the same rate of fire, but a little bit less tonnage for those launchers. Uh, and I've also got the improved uh, E War as well. Um, the it's also oh, it's got an extra layer of armor. That's where the tonnage is. Um, because of the way I've designed the uh, internal fusion drives, the fuel use is less per engine power. So for the same engines, the range has improved overall, um, just as default. Uh, the Sydney, oh, that's, that's the freighter, that's fine. Um, Warmonk Jump Scout, just new engines. Nothing special. Um, so now that that's covered all of our existing ships and what's changed, let's talk about fighters. So this is the um, design that I've got constructed with the Brook. Um, that one has been upgraded. Uh, so if you remember in the last episode where you set it up to sixteen thousand, that that's fast enough to catch the ones that we've got. In the new the new one with the fusion drives, it's got an extra uh, forty AP which is enough to push it up to 20,000 kilometers a second. So um, eventually uh, we'll be upgrading to these, but not at the moment. Uh, the shell water as well has been upgraded to internal fusion. Uh, I haven't actually set up the fighters, so I'll just throw this in there right now. There we go. And... Oh, we already got size sixes. Okay, um, so the sh that's a shell water. Um, I didn't want to name it shell water two just for the engine upgrades because I'd only just designed and built the damn thing. But it's got it's a little bit faster because of the engines and it's got a little bit extra a uh, little bit extra range. So that is what we have to work with. And I'll hide the obsolete. So let's see what we got. So we're bringing along our primary war fleet and if we go to shipyard TG we've got the shell water there it is okay and we need to bring along some fighters so naval organization will add a new branch And we'll add there we go, group alpha and the ships belong to that are this one. Okay. Now we also need uh, I've been docking these fighters in, in the steward because um, their crew doesn't go up when they're in orbit on a planet, but they don't get maintained by um, maintenance facilities. So what we'll do is we'll set up the uh, organization in a second, but here we go. So we have four squadrons. We have Squadron 6, Viking Warriors, Squadron 7, Nighthawks, Squadron 8, River Rattlers, and Squadron 9, Hooters. Honest to God, it named it itself. Um, but these are the squadrons that have been set up, and I've just been adding them in um, one, one at a time to their squadrons. Um, one of them suffered an engine first, I'm just going to have to make sure that uh, there's no issues. So 6 and 7 have Rear Admiral and Commodore... I can't pronounce those names. Uh, and they actually have an average grade. These guys look like they haven't actually got anyone. Which is weird, because I swear I've got enough people. Let me just go check the... I need the Tobruk 2. Oh, the original Tobruk. Let me go check the assignment. Yeah. OK. 
captain is the lowest. No, it's not. Lieutenant commander is the lowest. Jeez. Okay. There. That should help get some more captains. Um, so I think Viking warriors and night hawks is what we will be setting up. So to add ships, um, you can transfer them between unassigned and different ones. Just select it and uh, click the button to move it across. Details will give you a, a listing or a, a current status of your fighters. So name, class, what squadron they're in, uh, where, the, where they are currently, what mothership they're attached to, uh, or yeah, where they are, um, or what fleet they're in, what mothership they're attached to, where they currently are. So it'll have the mothership if they're docked. Otherwise, it'll show um, wherever they are. Their grade bonus and what ordinance they have loaded. Um, and you can list all of them instead of just a selected squadron as well. Um, so we're, we're taking Viking Warriors and Nighthawks. Up here, you can set um, mothership for the entire one. So we'll assign it, we'll assign it to... Shell water. There we go. And we'll launch and launch. Launch. There we go. So you'll see that they've launched into their own squadrons. And if we go here, see, Viking Warriors and Nighthawks. So they've, they've launched there into their own squadrons. And because we don't want, need to use them right this instant, we will go ahead and, yeah, it's assigned, recover to dock them. Go and recover. So that has basically told them, um, has, has basically transferred them across into um, the shell water. Uh, so it's got room for 14, which is these two. Um, we're going to have to get them to reload. There we go. Good, so they're both loaded up. Uh, we'll need, we'll get these guys to refuel, resupply, load the ordinance from colony, and yeah, that's fine. There we go. All right, how's our ordinance? Ammunition is 100%. Fantastic, and it fuels 100%, which is excellent. Um, oh, a few other small housekeeping details. Um, Luna and Mars are completely up to date. Uh, I have transferred uh, mining operations from Cromelin, which is basically exhausted of everything except Sorium, uh, into Coma Solar. Uh, Coma Solar is, does, of course, have a substantial Galasite deposit, so that is what they're doing there. Uh, need the planetary governor for that. Just gonna move one real quick. Mining. Where are you? Mars. QX. Earth. Ah, uh, Earth sector. Governor, governor. Yeah, you can have it. Um. Come on, so long. There we go. Um, right, so now that that's all organized, we'll go ahead and make our way back to Cairns. Yep, it's just to sign some commanders now that we've um, allowed people to come into it. So fighters use fighter combat bonus as the primary assignment for um, captains or commanders. Oh, one other one other thing of note is um, if you remember, I set it up. Um, I set it up so that the 
Shoalwater is a command carrier. That means it has a flag bridge. Now, task group, task or uh, forces, right? So task groups are your, are your little fleets. These are task forces, right? So I'm going to set up a new one, and I'm going to call it. First fleet. Okay, so first of all, we need a commander. So uh, we will take it to staff officers. Here we go. So rear admiral, and you will be the commander of first fleet. Excellent. So now we've got our staff officers again, and come on, you. So now we have, for the first fleet uh, task force, we have uh, various positions, okay? So, um, the, so whoever you assign to here will provide a small, uh, will provide a percentage of their skill in that particular group, or in that particular um, skill, um, to all ships in that fleet. So basically, it's exactly the same as sector commanders, except that um, it applies to the fleet, right? And as long as the fleet is within, um, in the same sector as the staff officers, it will gain that bonus. So let's go ahead and give us a communications bonus. So Commander Adrian Benoist will be our communications officer. Um, fighter operations bonus. Uh, fighter operation bonus um, involves um, reloading and refueling and rearming fighters. Um, this captain is actually higher, but he is uh, he he can go in there. He's got the better operations bonus, so we'll give him that intelligence bonus. Yes. Um, so intelligence is related to uh, interrogating prisoners and identifying details about ships uh, that you see. So logistics, yeah, we have somebody here. Uh, logistics is probably not important right now because it requ it's um, in relations to, uh, I believe, loading and unloading things. Uh, ops bonus, beautiful. Uh, public affairs, I believe it's not actually used at all. Um, but we're going to put somebody in there, so I think Diplomacy is what we want. Um, we don't need anybody big on that one. And Survey Bonus, we don't really need anybody uh, big in value on that one because um, we're not really doing anything... Uh, we're not really going to be doing any surveying with the First Fleet. Uh, fleet Headquarters are probably going to need that. So, now that we have a Task Force, there we go. First fleet task group. Uh, this probably needs to be refreshed. There we go. First fleet. So these are the attributes that we have. Okay. So ops. So uh, Commander Iman Amun uh, provides 20% operations bonus. Uh, Racial Ball provides a 20% intelligence bonus. Therese Perrault provides a um, a little bit higher than 15% survey bonus. Oh, because the Rear-Admiral Krugin, um also um, provides a portion of his bonus in there as well. Um, we've got a logistics bonus, we've got a communications bonus, we've got a public affairs bonus. Like I said, don't know what it does. And fighter ops. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Steve meant to have this do something, but like I said, I don't know. Um, so what we need is we actually need our task for task group to come back to Earth so that we can load up our um, task force team. And we're just going to refuel real quick.
Okay. So first fleet. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is one thing where location is important. So you can't just form them and disband them or whatever, um, whenever and wherever you want. So it is important that you, your fleet is in the right location to be able to transfer them. So now it is on the command carrier Shellwater. But we need to actually assign the task group to that um, task force. So this will this will let them move, but it won't actually assign them. So do that, and that should. So there we go. So we got AMAX group in Seoul, 29 ships. Oh, that includes the fighters. Uh, 29 ships with no orders or location. Um, so you can actually see all the all the task groups and what they're actually doing. So very handy to get a rough to get a rough idea of um, what you're working with. So now we can finally head back to Cairns. All right, let's go. In. So we do have um, a dedicated uh, a run to 25k jump tra jump um, tanker, and it is capable of jumping. So we don't need to rely on this guy. Uh, this is getting way too big. There we go. Rockhampton. Thankfully, it's not that far. There we go. All right. So, can't jump point refuel from own tankers. I want it to be nice and full of fuel. There we go. And we actually are able to refuel from the whole thing. Hooray! So, now we're actually going to detach Prespa and let it sit there. And we're going to take our combat group and we're going to activate sens sensors and we'll go in. All right, so we are now in Cairns. So we'll start by heading to one of our waypoints. We'll use top speed and we'll see how long it takes. Oh, there it is. Wait. Is that him? Yep, that's him. Perfect. All right, Viking warriors and night hawks, get ready for action. Launch from Shellwater. All right. So um, our torpedo. Has, does have a limited range of, I believe, only 50 million. To Brook, Torpedo, 45 million. So we need to get to about 30 million kilometers. So that is what we are doing. So contacts, follow at 400,000, 40 million, 4 million, 40 million. There we go. Add move and Viking Warriors, we will do the same. Four million, four million, there we go. Okay. So with sixteen thousand kilometers we should be substantially faster. There they are. So they don't have their own sensors, so they will rely entirely on the sensors of the fleet to guide them in.
but once they get in close, they'll be able to fire their missiles. And hopefully, they should be able to fire their torpedoes before anybody can see anything. Look at they're going. Look at they're going in. All right. Well, time to prime those weapons. Ah, they're not within range yet. Never mind. Okay, he's just turning around. What we can do is we can actually stop the main fleet and that should hopefully get him to stop moving as well so that our bombers can catch up faster. Uh, prime weapons. Assign. Assign all. Assign all. Hmm. Oh well. Copy assignment and target. Uh, copy system so that these guys will pick it up as well. So copy TG will only assign it for that wing. Uh, copy system will assign it to all ships, all identical ships in the uh, same system. So there we go. Ready to fire. Get a wee bit closer so I can't. There we go. Fire. They're firing, they're firing, excellent. Ooh, ECM. Yeah, okay. So ECM provides a penalty to targeting. So because we have no ECCM on these fighters, we have to close within uh, 27.8 million kilometers so we will actually adjust the range and hopefully it doesn't have anything to shoot him down shoot him down so we'll go for 25 million kilometers uh, well, what I might do is Ah, that's, oh, that's fine. Uh, follow. Add 25 million kilometers. Okay. And we'll uh, tell them to cease fire as well. So they're not spamming it. Zoom in. Uh, what's the range on them now? Range is 25 million. Perfect. All right, and now we will open fire. Uh, better synchronize them as well. Good, we've got synchronized fire on those. So that is launched. Uh, 
Now, I want to try something real quick. Because this is... Uh, I haven't actually played with carriers very much, so... Um, I do want to try something real quick. Yeah, okay. I want to see what happens if the tar if the fire controller is no longer able to is no longer able to track um, what happens to the missile, like whether it'll keep going or not. Hopefully, they'll lose tr uh, lock before the missile actually impacts. But it looks like even if you're no longer able to maintain a fire lock, um, you will still be able to... Yeah, so hit and run tactics look like they're going to work just fine for bombers. So I'll send Viking warriors back home as well. What are they doing? Huh. <laughs> oh my god, what are they doing? I don't know what the, I don't know what they're doing. They just turned around, they just curved and coming around the other side. But that's fine. We do have we did have scored a few hits, uh, some pretty substantial hits because there's 16 damage. Uh, one, two, three. It looks like we scored four hits from that salvo, and boom, another three from that one looks like. No, just one. So that was a very brief introduction to f fighter bombers. Brilliant. And now all that's left is to do ground invasions because if you remember, we do have a small colony of ground troops. Um, so what I'll do real quick is I will set up uh, Canberra 5, that's an Enterprise class. So, refuel, supplies full, maintenance full. Go to Cairns and start a geological survey. Um, this guy is also there as well. So, you make a survey run in Cairns as well. I want to get both of them working immediately. And AWAX will go to. It would be nice if you could go to um, go to the star, but we'll move into orbit around this one for now. There we go. Reloads. And last but not least. Uh, where is he? Here he is. Our salvage fleet. We need our two freighters. There we go. And that's got us 50,000. Didn't we get more freighters? I could have sworn that we had more freighters. Sydney, one, two, three. This guy, where's this guy? He's in the cargo task group. Right, okay. Alright, um, actually, 
I think I just realized that we don't have jump capability. Okay, salvage your fleet can stay where it is. I will send Collins out to start construction on jump gates towards Cairns. All right, so we will take a break now. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a relatively short episode compared to the last few, but I really just wanted to get the uh, carrier and fighter combat and just show you how that works real quick. Um, as you can see, the fighters have landed again um, and they are rearming slowly. Um, how are they doing on that? Yeah, it looks like they've, they're all completely rearmed. So, yep, that's a that's, uh, short, rough uh, version of fighter combat. So, I'll throw this up in the morning once I've actually woken up. Hopefully, YouTube won't be a pain um, and make it really slow. And on Monday morning, um, we will get stuck into it. See you next time.